What is up, everybody? So this is going to be the static clicking playlist playthrough uh, of mine. I'm pretty undertrained, so you're not going to see the cleanest technique ever, but that is not really the purpose of this video. What I wanted to try to do is to help those of you are, that are maybe looking to maybe get more out of the VDIM method by you know, going, through this, going through this playlist, highlighting you know what are my mistakes, what are the things that I need to be thinking of, what are the focuses that we should all have as we go through these static clicking tasks. And you know, with all of those things in mind, if you're getting that consistent training in, you're going to definitely get a lot of really good results. So with that said, let's jump right into it. Okay, so we've got to start out with our settings and our setup. So I switched myself up to the Quake Live settings because I'll be playing that tournament soon. And that's going to make the FOV feel, FOV feel a little bit more comfortable. And we've got the 26 CM as well as I have a very fast sense, which makes static very difficult. We got the sleeve with the Skypad 3.0 and the Lamzu Maya. That is what we are working with here today. And again, static clicking, definitely not my strong suit, but we're going to be starting off this playlist in a way that makes a lot of sense, which is going to be very fingertip oriented for me, which is just very fast micro corrections. And the key here really is definitely to make sure that, you know, you keep your accuracy high. This goes for pretty much all static clicking. There are some exceptions in this playlist we'll go through, but ultimately here, this is a micro adjustment. So you want to be quite quick. You want to do it in one movement and make it clean. So that movement doesn't have to be lightning fast, but just try to make sure that it is a clean movement and that it does feel like you can scale speed in with the way that you are executing the technique as you go. And we've got a very precision oriented, you know, very wide flicking you know, uh, situation going on here. And this precision, the, getting this feel for precision off of a wider flick is pretty key. And of course, we've got those micro adjustments as well when the orbs are kind of close to each other. You kind of want to bounce around between the different orbs. You don't want to just stay on the same orb and just keep clicking it. Obviously, that's not going to help you out. So precision is the focus here. Just taking your time, really feeling out that micro correction off of a wide flick. And again, this playlist scales. Um, so it kind of tries to hit a focus on lots of different skills like speed, precision, micro corrections. That's what we're seeing so far. Trying to combine some of these together. And when you have you know, a situation where you combine it together as in the last task, that deceleration so you have control off of a wide flick to be able to have precision is key. And in this particular case, we've got the wide flicks but you don't know where the target's going to appear. So it's a reactive static flicking task. And of course, this is really nice as well, because when you speed things up, especially in the future tasks, you're going to be wanting to be able to react very, very quickly. And so this is really just to help you have that clean technique when you can't plan your route with your mouse. And this task is, can be quite stressful, but the key is, of course, to try not to stress out. The, the, te the tension is going to come in your mouse. Try to control that. You know, always think about tension management. Keep the tension low. Focus on the entire field. Uh, and that's that's a, a difference. You know, we don't have a, a specific route. We're allowing the orbs as they grow to tell us what the route we're going to take is going to be. And that's going to be reactive based on what orb is growing most quickly. And so you just want to have that sense of I'm looking at the whole field. I'm not fixed with my eyes on one particular target so that will allow you to adjust more quickly and as the targets do grow it's going to be of course easier there's not as much of a precision element and indeed a little bit of an embarrassed look for me there because i was getting smashed in the face by all those orbs not the most fun time sometimes you can get overwhelmed on that task and here we have the uh, pokeball uh, task where you're going to be holding down fire and this is really nice because essentially you've got essentially a static clicking task with big flicks and precision but what it's really trying to focus and dull you in on here is, hey, take your time on that micro correction. Make sure off of that flick, that second movement as in the bar pill, we understand big flick, micro correction, hit confirm, that that micro correction is really landing on the target. And you can really make sure that you're not sort of sliding around on that movement. You want it to be flick, flick. Um, and so that, that task should really help you to get that feeling for that so that it feels more controlled and clean in the technique. We're building each part of the technique. So this next task, next task is just really, you know, five shot. It's just a big wall with the small orbs. There's nothing too special about this one. But again, we're really trying to focus on flick, micro correction, flick, micro correction, flick, micro correction, flick. And you want to keep your accuracy, if you can, above 90% ideally and, and try not to, you know, speed up if you can't at least manage that. And so now we have a, a you know a task which has the sim a similar idea as the, the previous one. It's just going to be less vertical movements, 
And of course, this is important because if you know if we're bringing in the context of the benchmark, we've got that multi-shot. Uh, I think it's multi-shot 120 task, uh, whatever it's called, <laughs> which is uh, quite similar to how this this uh, these movements are, where you know big swings from right to left, but maybe not as quite. Uh, not quite as much in the way of vertical movements, but you get to kind of keep that practice in, in terms of actually making those, you know, big flicks and micro corrections, much like in that previous task. Okay, so this is another task where we're really breaking things down again. We just focus on the big wide flick. So in on these tasks, many times you'll have maybe a small cluster of orbs when you flick to an area, or you may flick to an area and do a micro correct, and then have to make a big movement elsewhere. This is really trying to help you to get like a really big, good, clean flick. And for me, I have to really focus on using my arm correctly here because my tendency is to use overuse my wrist and fingertips, and so because I have such a fast sense, I can. But I have to really force the arm technique here, and you can see I'm really starting to warm up with it over time. And this is going to help me to correct my technique for later, because again, my my default tendency is to not use the arm as much as I just did. And on some of these big big fields of orbs, we're going to have to going to have to make those really large flicks, and I'm going to need to use that arm. So here we don't have as much big movement, so it's definitely much more fingertip and wrist oriented for me, given again how fast my sensitivity actually is. So we want to try to focus on that one in similarly similar fashion of making sure we just have clean, you know, flick and then micro correct. So here is like the, the Berry TS one, I believe, and Berry TS is obviously a, a speed switching task and target switching task. And here we want to just, again, just make sure that we just really dial in again, flick, micro correct, hit confirm click and that's that's it and over as we go across these different tasks where this is different variations of the same skill sets with maybe slightly different focuses again we want to always just try to keep ourselves honest with that technique and one thing you might want to think about is the deceleration so this is another way that this type of task the pokeball task where you have to hold the fire down is actually helpful because when you do a big flick the tendency can be to actually tense up a little bit too much and you want to try to have a little bit less tension when you actually land on the orb so it's much easier afterwards to make a micro a very fine-tuned micro precise micro correction and that's kind of one of the aspects of that technique you're going to be looking to try to train as well deceleration and tension management is really important so this task is really interesting because this is actually to help you specifically train dealing with clusters clusters where you want to go click 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 you know just like just go super fast and that can be it can feel quite unnatural especially when you're faced with that in a task when you get the opportunity to you know really destroy those clusters but this is really how you push your scores as well and it's nice as well because it helps you to, to give you sort of like that confidence to go a bit quicker when there's a very easy predefined path where the orbs are all very close together and you can break out of that that tempo that you have uh, because a lot of people will settle into a tempo i do it as well and sometimes you want to have that tempo and then you see a cluster and you go bang, 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 bang. just go as quickly as possible and be able to feel confident and competent but you can actually execute that and that is actually very useful in game as well to have that ability to do that because sometimes in game you have to do that as well so on this next task you know we've got again more of a reactive situation we don't know where that that uh, orb is going to spawn it's just two so again it's just really keeping us on our toes forcing us to be able to be very reactive and and when we're having to be reactive here at this point hopefully we're, our technique is feeling cleaner and a bit more warmed up so you should be able to maintain that clean technique hopefully as you are being more reactive because in theory it should be harder when it's reactive because you don't know what the path is having a sense of what the path is will usually allow you to cheat on your technique a little bit in a sense maybe cheat is not the right word but it does make it a lot easier than otherwise if you were just in a reactive scenario and and of course as well it's worth noting that if we're looking to or thinking about how you implement things into the, into the game when you know you're playing aim lab it's like okay well you know I'm shooting all these static targets. Well, that's not very, that's not like what I'm doing in game because people are coming from all over the place and I don't necessarily 100% know what's going on like I do in this situation where everything's cleanly parked for me. Well, in that case, you know, the reactive task is going to be hopefully a little bit more applicable to in-game scenarios where you do have to actually react and flick to your opponent and you don't know precisely where everyone is at all times. So here we get, we've got uh, what is the multi-shot task, but like a harder version of it. So the, there's more precision involved on the flicks. So you have to move your mouse, you know, as you would in that target across this entire field of orbs. And you just have to really focus on that, that precision. And you can actually see that my technique is looking quite a bit cleaner. We are getting some misses here and the accuracy is not great. I'm definitely making some mistakes in terms of clicking too fast and rushing myself a little bit too much. So I could probably benefit from slowing things down quite a bit 
um, in this run, but obviously I was a little bit um, <laughs> pressured because I was like, I gotta record this for this video and get this footage out there. So it's definitely not, I think, what I would essentially advise you to do. Um, but still we're staying in like around, okay, I was about to say 85%, we're dropping below that now. So that's a little bit sad right there, but eh, it's all good, it's all good. We understand what the purpose is. You wanna have that accuracy of hopefully 90% and above, because it's basically a control for you to say, I'm not going too fast that I'm not improving my technique, but I'm not I'm not going too slowly and having such a high accuracy that I'm not challenging myself enough. So that's kind of the logic that we have when we're thinking about this. So then lastly, you know, we're gonna go into the uh, into the multi-shot task. So we did five shot earlier, which is one of the static clicking tasks on the benchmark. And this is multi-shot, which is the other static clicking task on the benchmark. And again, my two lowest scores on my entire benchmark across all the categories. And uh, definitely not a great run here for me. I'm definitely getting used to this Lamzu Maya still, but I'm honestly really enjoying it. Um, this is, I think, of all the mice I've tested in the recent memory, is by far the most enjoyable in terms of not just it feels good to use, but actually the results that I'm getting with it in some of the, the, the gameplay testing I've done so far have actually been really good. And it does provide me a bit of extra stability, but Skypad plus super fast sensitivity is always gonna be a challenge when static clicking. So that's something I'm gonna have to try to master. And for me, you know, a big focus, as I mentioned, is making sure that my, firstly, in my arm is coming into play on the bigger flicks in a way that actually isn't often so natural for me. So that's something I have to work on. And then that will allow my fingertips to come in to action on the micro adjustments. And if I can do that pretty effectively, get that combination of arm and fingertips in a, in a good kind of balance, it's gonna be way more consistent. Because right now I'm having a little bit of sliding around that's happening as I come off my big flick and I'm trying to do that micro adjustment. So the control isn't all the way there just yet with this sky pad, um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with how this, this, uh, this run went as a first try and uh, I'm excited to keep it going. So hopefully this was a useful video for you guys watching at home and you picked up some tips as to what you're, sh you're trying to be focusing on in these, uh, in these scenarios. And I will catch you on the next one.